Hi everyone, welcome to episode 46 of Anna Jote Nets. Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel Anna Jote Nets. My name is Annina and this is my little knitting podcast here on YouTube where I share everything that I knit and everything that I design. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Annina. Uh, I come to you from the uh, west coast of Finland and I live, he live here with my two little boys and my husband. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate you taking your time and um, spending it with, it with me. In today's episode, I have a couple of things and I I really wanted to film today because I feel like I've been knitting a lot. So let's start with that. I have three finished objects and one of them was almost finished last time I uh, spoke to you. It's already crinkled. I did block it already, but it's been folded on uh, on the shelf already. And this is the zero waste sweater for my niece. And I thought... I talked about this already quite a bit in my last episode, so I don't think I will go into too many details. But basically it's a very scrappy sweater. I've been marling two fingering weight yarns together to create this very beautiful beautiful um, fading effect. It is a bit harsher on the sleeves because I did run out of the soft soft um, scraps. So but mostly it's merino um, merino sock and 100% merino base and then there is some of the yarns are um, also a woolier sock yarn with nylon in it so but overall I did hold um, I did hold always a merinos merino strand with even though I have some woolier yarns here so the overall overall feeling is very soft Anyway, so yeah, this is for my niece. I am not going to give this to her before um, fall because I want to make his brother a similar one as well. And then I would like to give them um, at once. So I will hold on to this. I will, I made this. I, oof. <laughs> you can really tell that I've been, <laughs> I've been cleaning and uh, doing laundry all day long. I haven't. I haven't been speaking today at all, so you are the first. <laughs> well, I did speak to my family in the morning, but they've been gone for, for two hours already. So um, it's a Wednesday morning, 26th of April, and it's my knitting, knitting work day. So I'll be home today. But of course, when you're working from home, it's always, uh, you always try to catch up your laundry and all the household work that you haven't done during the week. So, so I have already washed two loads of laundry and um, now it was time to film. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, there's nothing much to say about this project. If you want to hear more about it, you can check my previous episode. I talked about it in, in that episode. So that was my first finished object. My second finished object was the socks that I showed you in my last episode. Uh, I did finish them. They had just like a little bit of the foot and some toe, toe decreases uh, to do. So I will pop a picture here. Uh, these socks I have already actually gifted. And I did give these socks to my friend Selma, Little Big Knits, which... Uh, she is from Canada and you probably all know her. She's a lovely podcaster here on YouTube. She has done um, she has done her podcast already quite a few years and she's lovely. And I got to meet her 
last weekend uh, in Helsinki. So I will talk a little bit more about that towards the end. But I made those socks for her and um, I, uh, I was just winging the size. I was talking to my uh, other friend Mika who has already met Selma before. So I, we were trying to figure out what Selma's shoe size is and um, I think I nailed it. I did make those into 38, 39 and her, her foot ended up being 39. So it was a good and lucky guess. So she got those socks and um, yeah, they were just vanilla, vanilla socks, a little bit of contrast in the cuff and the heel was a garter, um, garter heel flap and gussets and then some uh, toe decreases. In Finnish we call them sadek kavennus, which is like a, a radiant <laughs> um, decreases. I have actually been trying to figure out what it is uh, called in English. Someone says it's an umbrella toe, someone says it's a star toe, but it's just, um, it's a lovely round toe and I like to change things up <laughs> change things up every once in a while and uh, make different kinds of toes and heels. So yeah, that was my second finished object. My third finished object has been almost done for quite some time. And the reason why I'm not wearing it today is because I blocked it yesterday and it's a bit damp still. But I finally finished the port side sweater by Leah Klein, Leah Ambernitz on Instagram. You can you can see that it's still a bit damp because it's, you know, bending and stretching. But the main feature of this design is here at the back. There is this beautiful garter neck and it goes into the sleeve. So there is like an I-cord edging that continues to the sleeve. My pickup is a bit wonky apparently. It's done in quite a big needles. I think 5.5 .5 was the um, it was the recommended needle. I did the flat portions with 5.5, .5, but I know that when I'm going into uh, to knitting knitting in the round. Uh, my tension gets tighter, so I did make the rest of the body with six millimeter after I did um, join join in the round. So you start with the back portion, you work um, work the front separately, you um, connect the fronts um, until the arm, uh, and then you continue until until you reach the <laughs> underarm, and then joining in the round and so forth. So it was a very lovely, lovely knit. I did make this uh, from Drops Air. Um, this is a bit thinner choice than recommended in the pattern. It's recommended to use, um, was it like a, a DK plus mohair, maybe? I can't even remember. It's I, I was test knitting this for her uh, earlier this year and the, rec uh, the requirements <laughs> were uh, to finish the yoke and to finish one sleeve. I did that and then I've been slowly working on it. The main reason is that this is not going to be for me. I don't really feel comfortable in this kind of color. It's very beige, grayish. <laughs> I don't know what's the color. Uh, I don't have the the color name or the ball band here with me but i have uh, put all the details into my ravelry projects so if you are using ravelry and you would like to uh, see more i will link my ravelry project down below and you can have a look uh, at my project page so this color is kind of fun variegated with beige and grays and this is going going for my going to be for my sister this is uh for my sister she loves more of these muted colors and 
I felt when I was making it that this is not my sweater. This is definitely uh, for someone else. And um, she's a bit uh, smaller than I am, but um, because this is a boxy and loose fitting sweater, I did make uh, one that was a size below the recommendation for me, for my size. But that was because I didn't want so much ease, but it really works even though you have a lot of ease. So uh, she has been trying this on and it works. Uh, the sizing works for her really well. I made the uh, sleeves a bit shorter than I would have made for myself because she is even shorter than I am, which is a miracle because I'm very short. But yeah, port side sweater, a fabulous pattern by Leah Klein. And go and have her, uh, go and check her out. And um, I will definitely recommend this pattern. I actually have already yarns picked out for one for me because I want this sweater for myself, just in a bit more intense color uh, so that it suits my wardrobe better. And that was my last finished object. If you know I'm not, uh, a mono monogamous knitter I always have a thousand projects going on and that's why I get so easily distracted and I feel like I've been casting casting on left and right lately uh, so I have started quite a few new projects and that's that's why it was really important to me also cast off something so that um, I will get room into my whip basket, which is next to me over here. And um, it was overflowing with all the projects that I have going on. Um, so let's move into my works in progress. And I will show you first the ones that you have seen. And then we move on to the new, to the new cast stones and talk about my trip to Helsinki after that. So this shawl you have already seen. Um, I did actually already call it a shoreline shawl, but I think I will have to sh change that name because uh, there is so many shoreline <laughs> shawls and shoreline projects on uh, Ravelry already. So this is probably going to be um, called something else. Um, this is a shawl that I'm creating and this is something that I've been I've been working on a couple of weeks already and this is how this has been my go-to relax relaxation project because it's mainly garter stitch it's easy enough for me to know what I'm doing without looking any directions or instructions and um, yeah I have a progress keeper here where I was last time. So I've done quite a few quite a few repeats. Seven, six, six repeats. And it's already getting smaller. So now it actually nearly fits into my cord. Let's see if I can spread it out without losing stitches. So here, now it fits into my uh, 100 centimeter cord. It is a triangular shawl. So I started with the widest part and I am decreasing down uh, towards the other end. So it is now one meter wide approximately and it will just continue to decrease towards the top. So yeah, I am enjoying every every step of the way. This is uh, made with linen quill in the colorway pink honey, a gift gift from a friend, and um, it's been very uh, pleasant to work with. I really enjoy working with this yarn. It's very soft. It's uh, it slides slides on the needles really easily. I'm using four millimeters, I think. Yeah, I'm using four millimeter needles, so it's the tension that you would get uh, using 3.5 millimeters if you are a regular knitter. I'm a tight knitter, so so yeah, I love I love the fabric it creates. It's soft, it's drapey, 
but it's not holy and um, this uh, seashell lace I'm just looking forward uh, blocking it out so that it will really um, come to life but it's a very pre pretty and very easy lace lace detail down the side and then there is just some slip stitches on the edges to create like a, a border on the edge. And that's my shawl. Um, if you have a better idea for the name, shoreline was too used. <laughs> so something um, uh, beachy, something shell inspired. Feel free to comment below and uh, give your suggestion for the name because um, shoreline wasn't wasn't good enough there is too many too many projects with that name all right uh, the next one that you have seen already was my impulse cast on from a couple of weeks ago it was my ranunculus it is my ran ranunculus um, which has not grown too much so here it is i think i'm now like just below the breasts, I have done, I think I had like just a two centimeters last time. So I haven't, I really haven't worked on this too much. It's been uh, sitting here be beside this couch or this chair and I've pulled it out maybe twice and I've done just a little bit of the body. I'm not going into details about the yarns and all that. If you are interested, please have a look at my previous episode when I introduced this the first time. Uh, there's nothing much more to say about it. I've just worked on it maybe an hour or two and um, I haven't really gotten that far with this project. And um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's what it is. I also spoke about my uh, other sample for my Tankarti. Uh, the, the test knit is going strong. Uh, there are there are already a couple of finished objects also in the Finnish uh, test group and the English one. And I feel like my testers are ahead of the schedule. So I've given them time to finish until the May, uh, until the end of May, I think, uh, at least for the bigger sizes. But I feel like uh, the finished testnet started a week later, or actually a week and a half later. So maybe their deadline was beginning of June. But I have a feeling that everyone will finish uh, before before the end of May. So we'll see. Um, I'm in a no rush um, publishing this pattern. It is a summer top and it will either be published late uh, May or early June. So here is the second sample. I really haven't worked a much. I really haven't worked much on it. Um, I've done the back and the front. They are still un unattached from the shoulders. So I will sew the shoulders next. The front piece... Uh, has the short row shaping the back also has the short row shaping on the shoulders and this is size one it's going to be for my stepdaughter and because i didn't have i didn't have uh just enough yardage for or metric 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 for one color i am striping this so i will make these uh stripes I have just connected under the arms and uh, I haven't touched to this one either because I've been busy doing other stuff. So hopefully next time this is already a bit further and um, I will see how, how things go with that project. So like I mentioned already uh, in the beginning, I did go to Helsinki last weekend with my husband. We had a little weekend getaway which was much needed uh, I realized that I've been very very tired and to be able to sleep two nights without anyone 
disturbing um, except that the hotel beds are not always the best but um, we got a child free weekend and both of us had some other plans as well uh, my husband went to the uh, went to a coffee festival he is a very uh, enthusiastic with uh, coffee with with some uh, freshly um, roasted coffee and uh, there is this coffee fair every week every year in Helsinki and we this was already our second year uh, when we went I'm not I do like to drink coffee I love when he makes me coffee uh, I appreciate the fabulous um, cappuccinos that I get at home but I'm not very interested in in the you know the brewing and the roasting and and all that stuff so he went with his friend who is also a coffee enthusiast and i had a date with selma uh, from the little big knits and jana from get to knits uh, or finnish knitting stories here on youtube so i had a wonderful time with those fabulous ladies and i will just insert a little video clip here uh, of our trip to the yarn store. So have a look. We are yarn shopping with two famous people. <laughs> famous. <laughs> I don't know about famous. So that was just a little little clip of our um, uh, first <laughs> first stop, which was Snurre, uh, a yarn store in Helsinki, which is a very beautiful yarn store. And um, yeah, um, what can I say? It was so nice to meet finally to meet Selma. I have met Jana before. Uh, we met in in Jyväskylänit festival last year. And um, yeah, we have a group uh, on Instagram where we uh, where we have a couple of podcasters around the world, and we we chat we chat um, constantly there, and we host knit nights every once in a while, and it's so fun uh, to meet up and to get to know other people. So it's it's just. It's been so wonderful and we've, we have connected already one and a half years ago, maybe. I can't really have, I, I don't really know. I don't really remember when it was, but it's been, it's been going more than a year that, that I know. So to finally be able to meet some of them, it's just so, so wonderful. And yeah. Um, uh, we did go and had lunch, we knit together, I had my shawl with me and I did film a little clip of, of Jana and Selma as well, so let's just have a look at that now. So we just had a little lunch with the ladies and now we have a little knitting chat. <laughs> what are you guys working on, Jana? What are you doing? Hat. Hat? Oh, that hat. yarn is delicious. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> Beautiful it's color. Maybe for me. It, I don't oh, know. Oh, you don't know who it's for? No, this is a sample. Oh, right, right. Of my new base. Right. And Selma, what are you working on? I am making my second corn cardigan. Amazing. And a cotton this time. Pat's in this grace. Yes. A mercerized cotton. Yeah. I may need a corn cardigan for myself, I too. I think you do need a corn cardigan <laughs> for yourself. I am just knitting away with my shawl here with the linen quill and yeah we are very content we just had a beautiful lunch so yeah that 
was just so nice uh we had lunch for like two and a half hours it was just so amazing and i got a little present from selma Oop. she brought me this canadian yarn roots and rain and it's a naturally dyed beautifully soft yarn it is a uh, corydale merino cross and it's a dk weight 100 percent wool and it's it's very soft and the color is very suitable for me it it looks it looks very me definitely so i will have to find a special special project uh, for this because this is just so special special yarn from a special friend and uh, yeah she also gave me some chocolate but it is already long gone it was delicious belgian belgian chocolates and um, yeah beautiful beautiful yarn so yeah this is my um only uh yarny uh, acquisition and yeah i haven't still purchased any yarn um this year if you don't count the little purchase for the tankarti which is which doesn't count because that's not um that's nothing but because I went to the trip uh, to Helsinki, I live in Kokkola, which is a four hour train right away. And um, I already had two projects uh, with me, but in the morning before, before we went, I had an idea to cast on a small little scarf um, or neck scarf uh, for myself because I wanted to wanted to work on a small project and not necessarily the huge shawl that I was carrying with me. So um, I got this yarn from from Inga and she, uh, Inga and I did a yarn uh, or a stash swap last, um, I showed, wow, Inga and I did a stash swap and she actually did unpack or she did um, Unbo did, she did like an unboxing uh, on her uh, stash acquisition video and she did publish that video just last weekend so if you haven't seen that please have a look what I sent to Inga and this is I will link the video here and this is what one of the things that she sent to me and this is Petit Mandarin by Sandness Garn it is a cotton yarn, 100% cotton, and it's very soft. So I started this just a basic garter scarf. The color is very me, this rusty, rusty brown. And um, I have no idea how big is, it's going to be. I just started from the the little corner and I, I'm increasing on the other side so it will create eventually a triangular shawl and this will be the top but yeah uh we'll see how it goes it was nice to work on this on the train and uh I think this is something that I can also keep in my handbag if I run out of socks to knit <laughs> while I'm at it so the train ride also needed a sock project because there's no train ride without a sock project, <laughs> in my opinion. And also because I did finish Selma socks, I freed my 2.5 millimeter needles and I wanted to cast on a sock tube because I have been, I've been wanting to make those um, tube socks and cut in heels. I've just made cutting heels once in my life and that wasn't very successful. I think the heel was too small. So I've been wanting to try again. And my my aunt um, asked if I could make her uh, a pair of socks. And because I love making socks, I love making socks for other people. So I said, yes, I can do that. So. I had this uh, self-striping yarn uh, at home. I got this from my friend and it's creating these 
uh, different different um, width stripes and with all these bright fun colors so I will make these into a long sock tube uh, I have two skeins of it or two um, balls of it she has caked them up but that's actually good because now I can see the color colors changing um, usually when I'm making stripy socks I want to match them but with this kind of project when the other sock is from the other end and the other one is from the other end uh, I don't know how well my stripes are going to form and also because I'm going to have to make the cuff from other end because I don't feel like crafting a cuff into this so I will I will try to live with it because this doesn't have very um the color striping or the color sequence is not very, you know, it's not very strong. So I think I will just try to end, end the cuff with the burgundy uh, or the dark, dark lilac purple color. So I will, I will be um, making the tube. I have a here the dark purple on the last few rounds so I think I will just count the stripes and when I'm close uh, towards the end I will make another cuff and then I will cut the tube in half make the toes from the different skein and then make the heels from the different skein as well I was really hoping to find a solid color for the heel but in my stash there is nothing with these colors which is which is kind of impossible but I didn't so I don't have any of these colors any of these colors at home so I won't <laughs> I won't be doing a whole um, a solid heel I will be using the same yarn because I do have a second skein as well so I think with the 50 grams I will be able to do the whole tube with with the cuffs uh, and then I will make the heels and the toes from the second skein and that way I think I will get a nice, nice uh, length socks, nice lengthy socks uh, with this yarn. I hope it made some sense because I feel like when I listen to myself talk, it didn't really. But yeah, uh, this is my handbag project. I will be keeping this in my handbag. It will be going with me to work and to other places if I need to wait uh, for something. Uh, my sons have a have music school today, so probably this will go with me and I will work on it while I wait them there. And those two already were my new cast-ons and I do have one more. Uh, you probably have seen it already here, laying on the <laughs> arm of my chair. And um, I got very excited about blanket project um, I started one blanket when um, I had my advents last year but if you have been here before you know that my advents were a disaster and some reason even though I changed colors I added colors I took some of my own scraps I was trying to deta detach myself from the advent thought of it it still, it still reminds me too much of the frustra frustration that was around me uh, through the advent. Maybe I'll just pick it up because it's on the floor. Um, so I started the safe, sp safe space, safe space, <laughs> safe space, safe, safe space blanket by Skeinanigans. And I did make one long, uh, how do you call this? One long column of of hex hexagons, and yeah, I have already weaved in all the ends here while I was at it. Uh, I think I will try to wait until until the frustration feelings. Uh, go away. I did already take out, there was two, 
which way it was. I think it was here. I already started two um, um, hexagons here, but because it had been a while since I worked on it, I didn't remember the pattern correctly and they were all wonky and they didn't look good. So I ripped them out and I will go back into this once I feel like it um, motivates me and I'm not going to make it into a advent project. But yeah, my advent calendar adventures were quite horrendous last year. So um that's why this brings out some frustrated feelings and that's why I don't want to work on it yet. I do want to finish it and also it's a fingering weight uh, blanket. So it takes, you know, a while <laughs> to finish. And I wanted something cozy and comfy and I really like the idea of a scrappy blanket. So when, when I saw the, what's the word? I will put the name here. It's cabin something. Pearl Soho blanket. Uh, it's made with two colors only, but I really love the look of it. I love the picture. I will put the picture here that um, that inspired me. It's the one with with you know like the stairs uh, with the stripes, and I wanted that. I didn't want the whole blanket like to mimic the both both ends and i also have seen one uh, project inspired by this this particular blanket from um from the podcast therapy by craft eunice and she had made a grow with me blanket for her child and she did just make the i think she did I think she did a square and then the stripes and then maybe she did one on the top and one on the bottom. I can't remember. Uh, I was very inspired by her and her color choices. So I decided to copy her, shamelessly copy, but also to have my own uh, way of doing things. So I will show you first what I have done. So this is the start point of my blanket. I have drawn a picture here. Maybe you can see. I did some calculations yesterday. So I hope this all makes sense. There are some numbers. So don't mind about that. So I have done this middle square. It is a, it's going to be nine stripes. Uh, because of the size of my scraps, I decided to do eight garter riches which is 16 rows and uh the the original pattern calls a 20 so 10 garter stripes but i wanted to utilize what i have so that's what i did uh, i'm obviously starting from the small scraps and moving towards the more bigger scraps so that i can utilize as much as i can and I am holding here some sport with some light fingering, sport with fingering weight, sport with fingering. This is like a DK worsted. It's the Merino Extra Fine by Drops. So it is, what is it? 100, uh, 200 meters per 100 grams. And then, you know, I'm just putting it, putting everything in. You can tell that some of the stripes are thicker because the volume is, you know, bigger. And then like this Merino Extra Fine, this black one, it's a bit narrower, but I don't think overall you can really tell. I'm using five millimeter needles throughout this thing. Again, tight knitter here. So I'm planning on doing nine stripes for the middle parts, and then I will do four uh, stripe sequences. So um, first I will make this and then I will add four stripes here and then four stripes on top and on bottom and then again four stripes and as you can see it grows. Uh, this line here on the side I was thinking maybe to add 
at the end two stripes and two stripes uh, for the long side so it will be nice I have no idea if I'm going to do that but I'm planning on making this into a single bed size scrappy blanket so it would be 153 uh, to 205 centimeters tall so yeah uh we'll see what happens uh this green stripe is a very i was really um uh, not enjoying making this green stripe as you can see it's the one that i'm wearing but as you can see all the knobs are on the back side <laughs> so i was i didn't like the way it looked i didn't like the uneven look of it but then I decided that I'm not going to rip out. I was already halfway through. So it is held, held with a uh, woolly sock yarn. So it's not ho ho held single. So I just pulled the knobs on the, on the wrong side. So that it, it has a cleaner, cleaner look. I'm using all kinds of scraps. Uh, I don't really care what material or I do try to maintain the softness of, of this uh, squishiness of this um, blanket. So I'm using Merino, uh, Merino Extra Fine. I'm using those sock, uh, sock yarns with nylon. Um, I'm using the woolier sock yarn, but I'm trying to hold it with a Merino sock yarn. I'm using Baby Merino. I have some leftovers of uh, non-superwash Merino yarn. This is going to be going in next. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just utilizing all these scraps I have. Um, there's a huge pile on the floor. Can't even. I can show a couple of them. I have all these colors. There is this. I've made a sweater for my son from this. This is already a bigger, it's not even a scrap. There's a whole 50 gram ball of it. But I think for the longer longer parts, I will definitely be able to use this. And there's a leftover from another skein. I made a hat from this baby merino. And this is Novita Merino DK. I've made a sweater out of this and I have like 30 grams left. So I'm using all these odd bits and bobs and also smaller scraps like this for the next section this is 13 grams this should be enough for for the next stripey stripey section so i will be using this this here as well so yeah this is something that stole my heart and i've been so inspired to work on this who knows how long that will last but while i am enjoying i will definitely keep destroying all the stash yarn or the scraps that i have and um, there are a few beautiful uh, needle-ons or fun needle-ons going on uh, busting my balls uh, by knitty stew and uh, scrappy stashy mal by uh, little big knits and um, yeah, I think this year has been, it feels at least that a lot of people are downsizing their stash or using up, up scraps. And um, I don't definitely mean I need to be downsizing my stash. I just want my stash to reflect um, my taste. I want my stash to feel like it's amazing. I am so inspired by it. So I'm trying to use up some older yarns, something that have been lying around, um, odd balls, bits and bobs. Um, yeah, so that's why I've also been doing those scrap scrappy sweaters. And yes, now I'm also making a scrappy blanket. And like Jana says uh, from the knitting, <laughs> Finnish knitting stories, blankets doesn't count as whips. So <laughs> I'm guilt free <laughs> what comes to that. So this is, I assume it's going to be a long term, long term project. Uh, at first it's going fast. Uh, the sections are small. 
it's very fun to do this modular knitting because it feels like it's going going so fast and it's just fun 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 and knitting should always be fun and that's why that's why we should always pick project projects that bring brings us the most joy i do feel a bit overwhelmed by my um nearly finished projects so i will be trying to tackle one of those um, almost finished sweaters or scrubby scrappy leggings or something so that I can just make room to my um, whip basket and it doesn't overflow. I would like to know what uh, scrappy projects you are working on. I'm very very uh, excited about scrappy knitting at the moment so I would love to know if you have something scrappy on your needles and if you do what is it and what kind of um, scrappy projects are you planning on making? That's also that's also something that I'm very interested in hearing. So I think this was uh, all for now. Uh, I have a couple of podcast recommendations. I haven't done this in a long time, but uh, I haven't tried written ever anything down. But let's try to wing it. <laughs> Lately, I've been enjoying watching. Neenitz, uh, Amy, uh, she is a fairly new podcaster, but she is so professional and she is very on point. Uh, her videos are very entertaining and informative. She is a very bubbly and lovely person and I've been really enjoying watching her, um, watching her channel lately and also uh, Therapy by Craft, I already mentioned her. Eunice and her her podcast is very very uh, fun. She is very energetic, energetic person, and um, I really love that she gets so excited about everything. And she's also also a very fun person to watch. And those those channels I've been enjoying lately a lot. Um, yeah. Probably those two at the moment. If you speak Finnish, there is also uh, an old podcast that turned into a new podcast. Um, Vivo Neolo channel became Neole Ansa and those lovely ladies. Marika, who is a dear friend of mine, joined Bia from Vivo Neolo and they created the channel or they, they recreated the channel and they changed names and their podcast is called Neule Ansa and it's so much fun to see. They are both very prolific knitters and in case you speak Finnish, that's a podcast to watch. So those were my recommendations from uh, for today. And uh, I had so much fun talking to you again and I will look forward talking to you again. So until then, happy knitting and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.